1170 WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Monday morning. We have some great resources in our community, and one of them is the Marion County Health Department. But what exactly do they do in there, and and how can you benefit from it if you don't know what's in there? Well, we're going to introduce you right now to some people who will tell you some of the programs that are, that are there. Today we're focusing on programs for women, uh, women and family programs at the Marion County Health Department, and uh, we're going to learn from Deborah. Breakfield. She's a registered nurse, and uh, and Maria Rivera. She's a clerical supervisor for the Marion County Health Department. Craig Ackerman is here. He said he's not going to say a whole lot because he's not a lady. <laughs> good, morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so let's just say good morning real quickly, and then we'll move on to the questions and the important stuff. Uh, Deborah Breakfield and Maria Rivera. Good morning, ladies. Good, good morning. morning. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having. This me. is your third radio interview. I heard. Yes, it is. Yeah, and but but this is going to be the best because it's live. See, <laughs> live has a, live is like having spicy food. <laughs> Recorded is like that bland food. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Well, uh, the programs that you're going to talk about today for ladies are they new? Have they been around for a long time, or or is it a mixed bag? Do we have some new and some that have been around a while? Uh, no, they've been um, on from uh, a long as a long time. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have the family planning, we have the maternity, we have the WIC program, we have Healthy Start, um, and we also have um, a new programs of, um, like for women over 50, um, in our, that is starting new again with us from the breast and cervical program. Oh, okay, okay. By the way, the first time I asked about the WIC program, it was in a grocery store. I was I was in the gro- and I said W I C under some items and I said what the heck is W I C what does that mean so I asked the guy the you know who's putting the milk in there and he said that's for women infants and children I said well where's the stuff for men <laughs> <laughs> he said go to the donut area I think it's over there <laughs> I'm not really sure but anyway so what what is how does that actually apply in the in the grocery store apparently the guy who I spoke to kind of didn't know either I mean does that mean you, you get a special deal or something or is that just recommended food. They're recommended foods. The okay. WIC program is a nutritionally um, based program so that um, it's a supplemental food program for pregnant women uh, and women who are breastfeeding infants and children. And they also have a teaching component of nutrition so that um, the people realize and know what good nutrition is and then they have a list of foods on their program that are suggested that the people uh, choose from. Okay, so Okay, go ahead. That is extremely important because so many people now feel they can just go to the health food store and get all of those vitamins and pills that are already in the bottles and take that in lieu of eating healthy. Correct. Well, what, what is interesting about the, the introductory comments that you made was that the um, the the programs that you have for women are not just for young childbearing age women. I mean, you go up to the, to every age, right? The age of fifty five oh. under family planning. Oh, okay, under family planning. Mm-hmm. And when we say family planning, does that that sounds to me that like we're talking about still childbearing years, right? Correct. Okay, okay. I guess I, guess I didn't think fifty five was. I thought that was too old. Is that? Am I wrong about that? What do I, I don't know anything, Robin. Help me out <laughs> no, here. No, no. Some, sometimes women can yeah. conceive at 55. Everybody's, really? Everybody's biology is different, and that's what's great about the Marion mm. County Health Department is you actually allow questions like that. You have people come in, and you do that kind of uh, uh, training with educational information. Correct. You do. And, and is that what this is mostly about, is information? Is you provide ladies with information to? No. No. Okay. We provide them with their um, yearly exams. We okay. see them for problem visits, um, birth control, of course, counseling visits with that. Uh, there are pap smears, breast exams, and referrals for mammograms. We also see them uh, for uh, sexual transmitted infections, uh, re- preconception counseling, and pregnancy testing. Now, when we say sexually transmitted infections, that often includes, and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't really know, hepatitis, the, the different hepatitises, right? Or am I wrong about that? 
We don't no. we don't routinely screen for hepatitis in our program. Oh, okay. There's another program at the health department that does that. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so that's not part of what you're here to talk about, right? No. No. Okay, okay. Um, what is the biggest misconception about what you offer? Um, w- like, what do women out there think you offer that you really don't, or maybe don't realize you offer that you do? I think that people just aren't aware that we offer anything at all, women-wise. Really? And so I think it's that's what our main purpose is, is to let the public know what we have available to them so that they they can utilize our services. I think we're probably the best-kept secret. And is it primarily women who can't afford their own doctor? I don't, I don't mean to be condescending when I ask that question, but I mean, are there... Wo- I'm imagining that a woman who has the insurance and the money to afford her doctor probably doesn't go to the health department, or am I wrong about that? You're wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. Right. Really? There are people that have insurance and payer sources that do utilize the health department uh, for care. In fact, for family planning, there is no income eligibility. Everyone is eligible to receive services in our family planning program. It's based on a sliding scale fee, so those folks that don't make much money or don't work at all pay less than the people that do. Um, okay, but well, that's everyone's fair. eligible. So that, that's very politically correct, isn't it? So you don't get so much uh, criticism from people who say you should pay your own way. If somebody can, they do. Exactly. Okay, all right. And is and is it mostly the the younger women who are showing up, or and, and just I know we kind of covered this, but I'm still not clear about it. Would would an 85 year old woman show up? No, no. No. Okay. And is that because that's the rules, or because they just don't show up? Well, the family planning program is is specifically for family planning, so they have to be eligible to still conceive and have children. Okay. So those folks that have had hysterectomies or that are menopausal or have their tubes tied, they would not be eligible for the program. Okay, so as far as the women's health programs that are offered by the health department, um, it's women... But I feel like we've covered this already. It's just not sinking in. It's women of childbearing age up to 55. Correct. Okay, okay. And does this also encompass uh, the children when they have to go back to school for their back-to-school immunizations and things of that nature? No. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be under a child health clinic for that. Oh, okay. So when the uh, uh, women come in with their children and then they tell you exactly what it is they're looking for, you'll be able to direct them to whichever proper department they need to go to. Absolutely. All of our clerical staff is trained to guide um, anybody that comes to our clinic and guide them to where they need to go. And, And what is the normal circumstance? Do you see somebody coming in? Uh, do they make an appointment normally, or do they just show up because they're panicking? They've got a you know. Well, a we have we have what we call same day appointments. They could call in the morning, and uh, between eight and eight thirty, and they can um, be seen for exams. Um, the only thing that we have as a walk-in is like for pregnancy testing. They can um, come in without having an appointment. Okay. Um, but uh, they can schedule any appointments between 8 and 8.30, and if we have the availability that day, we can see them that same day. Okay. Now, Craig gave us a, a, a note that says maternity. So, so we're, guessing, we're guessing that ladies will show up for that, that time, that whole nine-month period. Are they constantly being kept in check? Well, right? we also have a maternity clinic, okay, um, that uh, the clients can go and um, what they can do once they go to family planning, find out that they're pregnant, it's po- it, that they're positive for pregnancy. What we do is send them and um, they can get their Medicaid, 45-day emergency Medicaid right then and there. And then they could be interviewed in the maternity clinic, have an interview um, for getting started with their first appointment for their prenatal care. Okay. Do the, do the ladies ever come in asking for guidance as far as finding a doctor? Yes, they do. Okay. And we, we, t- we let them know that we have the services available to them or that they have the option of seeing a doctor out in the community. Oh, okay, okay. And, and uh, again, the, the payment is based on their income. And wh- how does that happen? Do you, like, you ask them for the IRS forms and all that stuff? How, does, how do you determine that? No, they come to the, f- what we call the fiscal department. They um, they're go according to the income that comes into the home, okay? And uh, the 
um, scale fee is up from zero up to probably 100%. But no matter if it's 100%, it's a lot less expensive for f a lot of coverage and a lot of um, that is involved within the exams given than if you would go to the private sector. Okay. Maria Rivera and Deborah Brakefield are here. Craig Ackerman is also here. You don't see him on the camera. Let me uh, give him a little shot right there. There he is. Hey, Craig. <laughs> there he is. Uh, and we're talking about women's health and women and family programs at the Marion County Health Department specifically. Does the Marion County Health Department have more than one location? Like, are there, is there one in Dinellon and are they, or are they all here in Ocala? Is it? Um, yes, they have, they do. They have in, um, the Bellevue location and the Donnellan location in Reddick. Uh, and also, they also have a Lynn office. Uh, there, they're going to have the WIC program um, being done there. If a uh, young, uh, if, if a, uh, a teenage girl comes in, say she's 16 or 17, she finds herself pregnant she wants to do that pregnancy test and then she wants to go full term with the pregnancy but have an adoption at the end can she do that without her parents consent or does the parent have to come in with her she can do it without her parents consent and then you'll help her go through the whole pregnancy term process and line up the adoption agency and things like that? Well, we don't line up the adoption agency. We can give her uh, options as far as where she can go and, and have those services done, but we don't, we don't handle the adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't handle that process, no. Mm -hmm. In the uh, talk about the maternity, does that include the, the care of the baby as well after, after the baby's born? Well, yes. What happens is once they deliver, um, they come back to us for their two-week checkup. Then after that, we give them a, what we call a, the postpartum, the six-week postpartum. Um, they can start, get started with um, also planning with new birth control if they wish. Uh, they are also counsel about their baby and all of that stuff. It's being done at that time. Okay. Um, tell me some things that we need to know about the different programs that are available. It seems like we're focusing mostly on reproductive um, programs, I, I guess you would say. What, what else would there be for, for ladies specifically? Or, or is that basically it? Is it the reproductive yeah. Well, we also have the Healthy Start program, um, which um, they have counselors that would sit with um, the client and uh, help them with whatever issues they may have. Okay. And how, how did you get involved in it? Uh, as, as far as working in this field, what, what attracted you to working with the health department and women's health in general? Well, I've always been interested in helping lady, right? the community, <laughs> yes. And I find that a lot of the women, we, I love to educate the women out there because a lot of them, honestly, when I first started, I've been there 19 years now. And um, when I first started, it seemed like the people out there in the community thought of the health department just a place to get their birth certificate, death certificates, or things like that. Yeah, yeah. Never that we had these options for them. Um, the services that we offer, which, I mean, it's a great service for every woman out there. Um, and they're welcome to come and visit our clinic. And we have uh, a lot of uh, w um, women... Um, practitioners who handle their exams because a lot of the women kind of are hesitant about going to the doctor because of that but because it's a man yes see I, I've always thought that that would make sense to me yes yeah it would be difficult so I, they feel a lot comfortable coming to us because of that yeah yeah um, so when when we we're speaking to the ladies out there let's say there's a lady and she's she's never going to have another baby at all but there are still programs for her correct okay and uh, uh, Debbie, since you are a registered nurse, do do you actually do one on one with the women that come in there to talk about whatever it is that that their needs are to help right. them alleviate fears or anything? Yes, we do. We have uh, registered nurses that are available to uh, counsel and educate, and they're very good. And um, we're real proud that we have have them available for the ladies. Debbie, are you ever surprised at some of the things that, that uh, people 
or are ignorant about it, or, and I mean that again in a condescending way, but just they just never heard of some of the things. Are you surprised when you find out that they just don't know or hadn't heard? I think so. Uh, there's always something that someone has a, a question about that they haven't, they may have heard about it, but they don't really know a whole lot about it and they will ask questions about it and fortunately we're here to help them and to um, instruct them and give them the information they need. And is there something that comes to mind uh, along those lines? Something that a woman is qu quite regularly saying, oh my goodness, you offer that? Is there something like that that comes to mind? I can't think of anything right off the tip of my tongue. No, no. not at all. No. If, if there is uh, someone who's in high school and they want to pursue a career in nursing, and they're really not sure, they, they need some more input. Can they come to you, Debbie, and ask to shadow you for a, a, a day or so just to see, you know, all, all of the ins and outs of what's going to happen so they know this is what they want to do? Well, no. What we have is sometimes we have uh, schools um, mm -hmm. that of students that uh, come to the health department to shadow because oh. they already have started, but no one from the outside to do that, no. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to a nursing school, we do have students that come to the women's health clinic to shadow um, our practitioners and our nurses on how, whether it's the maternity clinic or whether it's women's health. You are an extremely valuable resource for the citizens of Marion County there. So did you offer the other things like the uh, the, the breast cancer checks and the uh, the uh, immunizations and things like that? Is that all part of what you do as well? Right. The health yes. department has an immunization program. And um, as far as the breast cancer checks, we do that in our regular routine visits. And as we said before, we have, we're participating in the breast and cervical cancer program, which is a program for those women that are over 50, 50 to age 64. Um, and we do breast checks with mammograms and also um, the pap smears. And this is the flu season that's coming up. Can women come in for flu shots, or or is that not part of the program? I'm looking at Craig for this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, recently, the Heart of Florida Health Center uh, partnered with the health department to provide uh, child primary care clinic and adult primary cl care clinic services uh, for us, and uh, they, I think they have a uh, flu shot program going, but flu shots have become so available. You can walk into yeah. uh, major retail outlets, and their pharmacies have flu shots. The signs are up all over Marion County at the CVS drug stores and the Walgreens and yeah, yeah. the smaller drug stores. So for some of our clients uh, in some of our smaller clinics, we're giving a few flu shots, but we're pretty much leaving that this year to all the other locations. Oh, really? There's oh, okay. so many locations uh, in uh, Marion County where you can, where you'll see a flu shot sign, and they're very, very available this just year. Be, just be careful of that one at the 7-Eleven. I'm not so sure. <laughs> not so sure about that one. I have not seen that one. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. <laughs> yeah. is, it, is there a brochure or paperwork or a website so that the, the ladies who are listening right now will say, well, we're getting information, but I'm still, I've still got some questions, and Larry's not coming up with the question. <laughs> well, you can call the health department at 352-629-0137. We do have a website at www.marioncohealth.com, but I would recommend you call. If a, a woman looking for information wants to call, telephone us at 629-0137. Ask for the women's health program or ask for maternity or ask for family planning, any of these three questions will get them to the Women's Health Program and we can answer your questions. Excellent. Is, is confidentiality ever an issue? Are the ladies who come to see you ever concerned that they want, you know, they want some answers to their own situation, but please don't tell anybody I'm here. Does that come up? Our family planning clinic is totally confidential. Um, whatever uh, they ask or whatever goes in their chart is totally confidential and only that person can have access to it. Unless we, of course, we have a, a teenager come in, a uh, young lady, and decides that um, she would like her mother to know and partake in what goes oh, on. Yeah, well then, yeah. We do have those. And we do make sure that it goes in the chart so that the mother is included in that. Um, but if they come that we have teenagers or anyone um, 
uh, woman coming in, it's totally confidential. Uh, I mean, some of the obvious ones that you hear about all the time is smoking and drinking and other things when a lady is pregnant. Uh, are there, uh, let's say let's say there's a lady and she's pregnant and she just can't on her own. She's trying to quit smoking, she can't. Or maybe she's thinking about getting pregnant and she wants to stop before before that moment. I mean, does does the health department offer ses- like smoking cessation programs, that kind of thing? We don't offer uh, that specifically uh for the pregnant ladies, uh, what we do is we have a Florida quit line that we provide the number for. And also Healthy Start has a wonderful program that's case management that uh, provides a stop smoking program for the pregnant ladies. Deborah, how did you get into this? You, you're a registered nurse. You've dedicated your life to this, obviously, just like Maria. How, how did you end up in this path? Well, all of my nursing career has been maternal child health, and I've had a special interest in um, taking care of women. And actually, I'm a nurse practitioner. And um, I decided to do that because I thought, you know, I, the, women need an advocate. And who better than another woman to yeah, be an advocate yeah. for another woman? So um, it's been a, a passion of mine for a lot of, lot of years. Uh, I've been a nurse for 35 years, and I've been at the health department for 23 years, and I can't see me doing anything else but this. Do you, do you sometimes have to be a psychologist in a way? Like sometimes you have to read between the lines when somebody comes in and talks to you, and you say, wait a minute, are you really here because of, like, you, you've done it long enough. I'm sure you've heard everything in the book, right? Right, right. Yeah. You, you know, when they first come in, sometimes they're a little nervous, and, and they're not real sure you know, how you're going to react to certain situations. Yeah, but whenever yeah. you gain their trust, then they begin to talk to you and, and you really find out the real reason why they're here. And chances are that dynamic between men and women would cause a lady to hold back some information, I would think. So just because of the way we are as men and women. Yes. You know? I know a few ladies that are between the ages of 55 and 80 that prefer to go to a nurse practitioner because they feel more comfortable, they feel they can open up more, and that they will be more objective. Is, is that true? Because that's the feelings that these particular ladies I know have. I think so. Um, I think that, you know, we're, we're taught in our schooling um, a, a, an education component, and, you know, we, we take time with people. We don't rush them in and out. We give them what they need. We are there to answer the questions that they may have and make them feel like, you know, they're, they're important to us mm-hmm. and that we really want to be there to offer them whatever they need and give them whatever they need. And would a woman be going to her doctor and the health department simultaneously, or is it usually one or the other? Usually it's one or the other. Okay. Okay. I didn't. I wasn't sure about that. Um, okay, so we have the information so to get more information. That's always a good thing to make sure we have. Uh, Craig gave us the website, MarionCOHealth.com, and CO, I would presume, means county, MarionCOHealth.com, and the phone number is 629 um, can I just ask a statistical question? I'm not usually the guy who asks that, but I wanted to know, maybe just in general, how many people per day or ladies per day or per year, whatever number you might know, do you serve? Do you have any idea? We've got probably about 5,000 clients. Wow. And we provided last year a little over 50,000 services. Wow. So we're quite mm-hmm. busy. That's huge. Yes. I had no idea. And do you have people that speak other languages, including sign language, for people that come in to communicate? Yes, we do. Um, When uh, we don't have them there, um, we have a lot of Hispanics, um, um, interpreters that can help. But we also have an interpreter line for anyone that comes that needs to speak Chinese or... Really? Uh, whether it's French, yes, wow. to help with wow. their with their exam and stuff like that. Yes, we do. Um, because I'm also um, um, an interpreter, um, so I kind of help within. I'm always in the rooms helping the practitioners with their exams for Hispanic people. And do you have ladies with abuse issues come in? And and do you help them with that, or do you uh, recommend another agency for that? Well, we help them with that. Uh, that's, in fact, that's one of the questions that we ask uh, very, very routinely 
to women and uh, when we find that there's an issue or a problem then we help her seek um, other means to take care of the problem or get her out of the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. or just give her what she needs well, again, if there's, wow. a, if there's a lady listening and you did not know about the services of the Marion County Health Department, look into it, regardless of what it is. If it, if it doesn't match with what they offer, they'll, they'll send you in the right direction so that you can find an agency that will be able to help you out. Uh, see, it was, it was painless, right? <laughs> yes, it right. was. Uh, you ladies are awesome. Thank you for what you do. Craig, you're awesome, too. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all of you for coming in here. Craig Ackerman, let me put the camera on you. Thank you for bringing good guests to us, by the way. Craig? Glad to do it. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Maria Rivera, thank you. Thank you for having me. And Deborah Brickfield, thank you. Am I saying thank your name you right? Thank you so much. Excuse me? Did I say your name right? Yes, you Break. did. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you all of you. We'll take a little break, and we will be right back. Yes, George. I can't get the car started. I need to get the Devon Self Storage in Ocala on Clutter Garage. Oh, George, don't worry. Devon George in Ocala has a free move-in truck now. Just ask for John or Michael. They will gladly help you. George, you better call 352-873-0777. Okay. 